What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Speaking Sessions podcast. This is Philip Sessions, your speaking coach. I've got Eli Delaney here. He is an automated systems strategist and is also known as the People Whisperer. He is the creator of the follow-up Rockstar System, teaching entrepreneurs how to go from surviving to thriving in an economy through the art and science of building strong relationships and follow-up for life. He's an Amazon bestseller with his two books, Marketing Tidbits and Networking Tidbits, with a passion for connecting people. His best-selling training course, Networking Like a Rockstar, has over 1,300 students registered globally. Eli helps speakers, authors, and coaches automate their follow-up to grow their businesses without having to have an MBA from MIT. And he's the guy to help you build a 24-7 automated system and turn you into a follow-up rock star. I'm really excited to talk today with Eli because while he knows about speaking and has been a speaker, we're going to talk about what happens after the stage. You get those leads and what do you do with those leads? That's just something we haven't talked about yet on the podcast. So excited to talk about that. But Eli, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Oh, where do we want to start? Uh, first and <laughs> foremost, thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. And I love doing this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, we we literally just spent a half an hour talking, just catching up and sharing stuff before we even started hitting the record. We should have saved it for the show. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been in business for over 25, 26 years, something like that. Uh, my first company was a web and graphic design agency. And I grew that to opening up an office. I had five employees. We're closing three to five contracts a week. And it was all through networking. It was all through connecting with people. Mm. And then I, I grew it to a point where I realized I didn't like going to an office. I really didn't like my employees and I wasn't happy with it. And I ended up actually sideline what had happened is a lot of my clients over the years had come to me and we were designing their logos and their websites and their business cards and all their stuff. And they're like, this is awesome. This is exactly what I wanted, but now what do I do? And so I started teaching them marketing skills. You know, I give them just tips and tricks kind of things. And that was something that I, I got really good at. And a lot of them would take it and would start working. They're like, great, this is awesome. So I actually decided to start using that as a tool and teaching people that, which is kind of where I stumbled into the speaking side of things. Mm -hmm. And so fast forward, I've done... I've worked with people building their follow-up systems for all across the globe, which is a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I always have that running joke. I love the technology we have today. Like we're sitting here on a Zoom call and um, it's not uncommon for me to have conversations with people in three different countries in the same day. And it's just, it's such a fun, small world using the tools and technology we have. The kicker is making sure that we use it properly as opposed to letting it run us and, and you know, take over our lives. And yeah. so- that's where I help a lot of people is putting that stuff to work. Um, you know, I do have a running joke. I always say this when I'm speaking from stage that the idea is to use technology the proper way, which basically is like, for me, I could go outside and get hit by a bus today and still sell you stuff for three more years. <laughs> and I'd love to be able to show you how to, you can do the same thing. Mm, man, that's a powerful way to say that. And we're definitely going <laughs> to dive into that. Uh, but before we go dive into that, I have to ask you the first question I always ask, and how that is, how did you get over the fear of public speaking? Um, so the funny thing is that when I first started, when I threw my business, started my business, I, I only had a couple of clients um, and they were referrals. You know, it was like my, my girl, the company, my girlfriend worked for, you know, essentially it was, that's who I got. And I was like, okay, I've got to do this. I'm definitely unemployable. My last three employers agreed with me on that one. And I needed to figure out a, a way to get in front of more people. So I joined a local chamber of commerce. It was actually a recommendation from my mom. Uh, she was, I was trying to figure out how to grow the business. She's like, well, have you gone to a chamber of commerce? I'm like, oh, what? And she was like, it's, it's, I don't know a lot about them, but I know that it's something where business people get together and, and talk. So you might look that up. I'm like, okay. So I went and I looked, I joined a local chamber of commerce and I went to one of the local networking groups and it was a small group. It was a lunch. It was called the lunch bunch. And I'm not a morning person. So it was a perfect one for me to get into. There's like 12 people in there. My first mm -hmm. week, the, the head of the, the groups, like, you know, we don't have any other web guys in here. 
you should you should speak and you've got a spot open in two weeks you should speak and tell everybody what you do because i think you could get a lot of business by that people need to get to know you and i'm like uh, uh, okay now a little bit of background from me i actually come from a music background i was classically trained in voice um i was in jazz choir i've at the time i played some instruments not great but i did play um but the funny thing was that i had stage fright i had gotten away from it yeah and so him asking me to speak in front of a group now it's only 10 12 people i was terrified i spent the next two weeks just plowing through practicing this presentation i i had an eight page handout so i had a copy for everybody i end up getting there i show up hand out the 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 hand out to everybody. And I get up there and I'm on, you know, in front of the room, reading word for word with this paper in my hand, just shaking. Like you could visibly see the paper shaking. And the thing that helped me over that was there's one gentleman that I had met that first week that he was a mortgage guy, a guy by the name of Gary. And he, he said he needed a website. So he and I had had lunch in between this time. And he got to know me. We asked some questions. He had already hired me at this point, but he could see how scared I was to be in front of everybody. So what he started doing was he started reading the handout ahead of where I was at. And he started stopping me and asking me questions because if he stopped me and asked me a question, I would stop looking at my paper. I was looking at him and I'm just answering the question. Well, mm-hmm. I knew the answers to the questions because I wrote the paper. It was my content, <laughs> but he taught me to get, a, get away from that and just focus on answering a question and, and sharing stuff. And mm. it taught me that for me, there's, you know, there's a lot of different personality styles from it when it comes to speaking. But for me, I am very interactive and I want true interaction. I will, I don't care if there's 300 people in the room, I'll call somebody up and they're like, Hey, what do you think of this? And we're having a conversation. And so I, I changed, I completely shifted my mindset around speaking. I'm not speaking in front of a hundred people. Mm-hmm. I'm having a conversation just like I would if you and I were sitting here, you know, right now, you and I are just sitting here, right? Yeah. The only difference is there just happens to be 300 other people just listening. Mm. And, and if you do it that way, you shift it to a conversation, make it more about a dialogue it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. And so that is how I got over my fear. Um, It's literally just a shift on how you communicate. And I always tell people, I'll get on stage and I'm like, all right, this, I am interactive. You guys need to reply because if you don't, I get twitchy. It's not fun. And it's, that always gets a good laugh out of people, but it loosens them up to know that if I ask a question, I'm looking for an answer. Mm -hmm. And now we're just having a dialogue. We're just having a conversation. No different than you and I were sitting down having a cup of coffee. Mm, that's awesome, man. I, I like that that guy that really helped you out. And I just imagine holding this paper and shaking. And that's mm-hmm. why I tell a lot of people don't bring notes with you because or try <laughs> memorize a speech because then you're going to mess up because you forgot mm-hmm. a sentence or a word. And yeah, having right. that paper there too. Oh, I'm so nervous. And now you can really see it. You probably already could hear in your voice. But having that conversation is a great way to do that. And that's a great takeaway as well to just imagine speaking to one person. Yeah, that is for me, that was a night and day difference. And anytime I have a a new speaker that I work with, um, because I I do primarily work with speakers, speakers are my best clients. Mm -hmm. And when I get somebody who's newer to the game and they're they're still trying to kind of get their feet grounded, that's one of the very first things I'll tell them is, is go go with that. Just think about having a conversation with one person. Don't worry about the other, you know, 20 people, 200 people. doesn't matter how many are in the room. You're just having a conversation with one person and it's just a dialogue. You're just chatting. You're sharing some yeah. cool stuff to help them out. When you do that, it, it totally relaxes the, the mind. Mm. For sure. And so let's, let's fast forward through this speech here. We're going kind of like to the end of the speech. If you if you need to go into the speech partially to help us with how do we get on that other side and have these automated systems and have this follow up game kind of happen, you can definitely do that. But I imagine we're kind of at the end of the speech. We have this program or something that maybe we don't necessarily sell from stage, but because Mm -hmm. of what we've talked about, people are probably interested in getting to know us more, getting to learn about our product or service, whatever that is that we're 
speaking about or partially partially speaking about from stage. Yeah. And now we're off stage. We've probably gotten a couple of leads because like you mentioned, and I want you to kind of dive into that a little bit as well, that you can get in front of a lot more eyes and I really get a lot more leads just from mm-hmm. speaking on stage, but then we're also going kind of off stage. So just help us set up that picture of what this looks like and, and why people should go through this process of creating this whole follow-up system. Okay. So first and foremost, let's say you get out there and you're doing great and you're doing, maybe you're doing a speak for a uh, speak to sell, which is basically you're, you're on stage, you're speaking at the end of the presentation, you're allowed to actually sell your product right then and there. It doesn't even matter how, what the price is on the product at that point. But most people in a situation like that, if you got, say you're in front of a hundred people and 10 people buy, that's a good day. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. That's a 10% close from stage. That's not bad. Now I've definitely seen people do higher, but I've definitely seen people do lower too. Like I've seen people sell zero. Um, so if you have one of those days, don't stress. It happens. Okay. It happens to all of us, but the kicker is, and this is where, this is where the follow-up rockstar system actually came from was me. When I first started speaking, I started doing this and I was getting that. I'd get 10 people, you know, roughly 10 people would buy out of a hundred. And it was, those are great days, but my brain immediately went to, well, what about the other 90? What happened to mm-hmm. them? Why, why didn't they buy? What can I do to fix that? What, uh, what did I say wrong? You know, it's that, it's that self-doubt kind of came in. But what I did was I started creating follow-up systems. And the idea is how can you re-engage that person down the road to stay in touch with them so when they are ready to buy? Because the reality is, you know, you and I were talking about this a little bit before we, we started recording here. We we're talking about personality types. Mm-hmm. And we have, you know, there's depending on which system you want to follow, there's disc, Myers Briggs, there's a whole bunch of them out there. But there's there's one personality type in particular that a lot of people ignore. And that is the um how about the the thinker is what it's not, not the term I was going to use, but the conscientious one or the supportive one. Um, I guess the supportive one would probably be which one it is. I I have my own names for them, <laughs> uh, my own names for them because it's just more fun to do it this way. <laughs> um, the alphas, these are your CEOs. These are the ones that make decisions very fast. They don't have time for small talk. Um, the partiers, these are your sales guys. These are the ones that have to be the life of the party. Um, the, the third one, I call them the warm and fuzzies. They're the ones that are actually, that would be actually the supporters would be, um, mm-hmm. they're the ones that really want to make everybody happy. And then I guess your conscientious is the last one. They're the ones, um, intellectuals is what I like to call them. They're yeah. the ones that have to think it all through. And so if you're in front of that room of hundred people, 10 people buy, you got 90 people, there's going to be probably 10% that literally would never buy. They don't care. They don't think that you're worth anything. That's okay. That's going to happen. That's just a numbers game. But yeah. that 80% in between are somewhere on the spectrum. And some of those people, maybe, maybe, you know, we always say, well, they just don't have the money to buy. Well, that's true. Maybe they don't, you know, sometimes that is actually the truth of the case. Some people are going to say, I don't think I, I need this. Some people think, um, I don't need this yet, but then the intellectuals are the people who they want it and they, they, they're really sure they want it, but they can't make a quick decision. They have to think about it. Mm -hmm. Their brain has to process all the permutations in their head of what could happen and what's good and what's bad and, and all the pros and cons. And it might take them weeks to come to a decision. But most people give up on those people. And so here's where the follow-up comes into play is that you have those people that buy today, but then give them an opportunity to connect with you and learn more and stay in touch with you. And it's your job to stay in touch with them to build the know, like, and trust factor. We've all heard of that, right? Mm -hmm. KLT factor. You've got to have that. When there's, by the way, those three letters are in a certain order or in purpose, know, like, and trust. They have to get to know you before they can decide if they can like you. Once they like you is when they actually trust you. Pretty much the, you know, doctors and lawyers are the only ones that can skip that process. And that's because we just need them. It's not because we actually like them. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we may trust them, but we don't like them most of the time. Right. Um, so 
we have to we have to think about that follow up process. And so one of the things you should be doing, you should have some form of freebie, some some way that they can connect with you and opt into your list. And we call it a lead magnet. You call it a freebie. It can be I, one of the things I love are checklists because they're quick and easy. First and thing is something you can create fast. There's a very, I have a very specific formula that I use for creating them literally start to finish everything in place in less than a day. Um, but you get that as something that's fast for you to create, easy for you to create and fast and easy for somebody else to consume. Because if you give them a hundred page book, they ain't going to read it. Mm-hmm. If you give them an hour long training, they're not going to watch it. Give them something that's two or three pages. It's short, sweet, to the point. You can always lead them down the road to that next step. But we live in an ADD microwave society. You've got to have something right away. And yeah. that's where you get them in the door to then follow up with them. And my, cl- my, my whole thing with this is I don't care if it's today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, or the next decade. I want to make sure that when people need what I have, I'm the one they think of. Mm. And so you need to follow up on a consistent basis. Um, I'll share a quick little little thing. This is my favorite story to date to kind of show the power of this. You're going to have people that, that you know, they might come back a week later all of a sudden. You're going to have people that come back a month later. And all of a sudden, you're just going to send them something. They're like, you know what? I really, really like to talk to you. Can I get on your calendar? Or if you do it right, you have a calendar set up so they can book along the way. But I actually have a guy September 16th, 2020. He emails me, he replies back to one of my emails. He's in my three-year campaign, right? And by the way, once you get to three years, you just loop it back to the beginning because nobody remembers three years ago. Um, he replies back, goes, Eli, I've been on your list for a few years now. And I want to thank you for everything you, you've given to me. You've helped me with my business like you wouldn't even believe. My son's starting a construction company and I was wondering if you can help us with some marketing stuff. And of course, it starts a dialogue, which is what we want because dialogues create sales, right? Mm-hmm. You have to have a real conversation. That's why even speaking, you want to make it a dialogue because that's going to open them up to have sales. They want to buy from you because they trust you. They build that. You build yeah. that. Um, but I go and I look in my CRM system, my database to see what does quote unquote three years or a couple of years mean for him. He had actually seen me speak in Scottsdale, Arizona, July 3rd, 2010. Wow. 10 years and three months later, he's coming back to refer his son's business to me. Wow. (laughs) All because I put the follow-up system in place and let it run. Mm. I built it once and it started just working forever. But I built that relationship to where when he had a need, I was the first person he thought of and he reached out to me. That's what you want to do. Man. Man. Long way around, but I got you there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's that's amazing. And the beautiful thing is you weren't manually sending all that no. <laughs> for, for those 10 no. years, but no. still one sale that happened because you had one speech and you set up this you know, one system. I know that's a lot of emails to set up for <laughs> three years, but so don't, uh-huh. don't feel like you need to set up for three years. I mean, whether, whether it's one yeah. email or seven emails or whatever it is, just slowly start adding emails onto this email yeah. list. Just so yeah. talk to us actually about that a little, because I know okay. I've had that struggle where I'm like, oh man, I need to set up an email list. But then I know if I just do one, like one follow-up email, like that's not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. So what's maybe, maybe a, a general rule of thumb, like that maybe we should shoot for just to have like a decent follow-up, but then okay. also because three years, I mean, that's, Oh my gosh, like that's a ton. I mean, you're talking about uh, what that's probably 150 pieces of content at least, because you're probably talking about one a week, roughly roughly speaking. Yeah, maybe more than that, but 150 emails I've got to create. Yeah, I don't have time for that. So, what what's maybe like a good rule of thumb of like a okay. follow up sequence as far as amount of times? Right. So, so here's the thing: you don't build it all at once. Yeah, you build it over time. So here's how I did it. Um, now, topic wise. Don't talk about just, it's not, by the way, this is something that's really, 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 really critical. So please pay attention. Do not pitch your shit all the time. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I just say, I'm sorry, got to say it. Um, you've got to make it about the relationship. So yes, there will be offers, but you've got to make sure that you're just adding value a lot. And that can mm. be book recommendations. 
by the way, not your book, but other people's books. Mm. So I've, you know, you know, I just recently moved uh, to, to a new, you know, moved across country. I still have stuff in boxes, but normally I have sitting on my desk, a copy of the Go-Giver by Bob Burke. Um, mm. If you haven't read the book, it's an amazing book. I highly recommend it, by the way. It's very short. It's an easy read. It's written like a parable. So you can read it, read it in maybe three hours. Um, and it talks about being a go-giver. How do you, how do you give first knowing that karma will return? You will get it back. You don't know how to get it back. It might not be even from the same person. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know you will because you just you're giving first, being a value first, and you know it's going to return. And he puts it into a very eloquent story to to kind of put the premise together. I recommend that book all the time. I have a joke that I, I should go out to reach out to Bob and say, okay, dude, when do I start getting affiliate commissions for as many books as I have sold of yours? <laughs> um, and so I recommend that all the time. Now, I just told you about the book. I told you why you should read the book. I told you what it's about and that Bob's a good guy and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's the kind of thing that you can do in an email. Hmm. And you can literally do like just what I just did. It's like, hey, here's a book. This is why I like it so much. This is why I think you should read it. And I would love to hear from you after you read it. By the way, it'll, it's a short little tiny one. So it'll only take a couple hours. What yeah. you're doing is you're getting a piece of value that nobody, it's, it has nothing to do with you. You don't get anything out of it. And you're asking for a response. Mm -hmm. you're asking them to reply back, which starts a dialogue dialogues create sales hmm. and so a book is a great choice videos that you find you might find a jim Rohn video or a napoleon hill video or something it depends on your business right um hmm. you find something that you know your prospects and your clients would find valuable you can share these things out and then you mix them up with some of your own content there's nothing wrong with adding some of your content just don't make it all about you yeah and Here's the thing. When I wrote my three-year campaign, I used to go down to a local coffee shop. I'd go down early and I'd schedule and block off my calendar for half a day. And I would go down there and I'd have breakfast, get my mocha, sit down in the corner, put on my headphones with some techno music and just start writing. And I would write five, six emails. And by the way, here's a little secret. Write them, don't edit them. Write them, then go back and edit them all at once. Hmm. Okay? Because if you stop to edit, it'll slow you down. And so I would write usually about six emails, about half a day, once a month. So I do that for a month. I come back a month later and I write another six emails, same process. Now I technically have three months worth of content. Because if we're looking at once a week, I got six and I got another six which means I've got a full month extra at that point. Yeah. And I put that in the calendar every month. I would spend a half a day and I would write six emails. And I got to the point where I was getting better at it and more efficient with it. And the ideas started flowing better because to practice, the more you practice, the better you get at anything. I was then getting like eight emails done in the same time frame. And I just kept doing that and kept doing that and kept doing that. And it just added and added. And next thing I knew, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, wait a minute. I got three years worth of stuff going. At that point, I was like, I think I'm going to take a break. And I haven't <laughs> gone back and added to it since. I've tweaked it. Ever, you know, I've, I've, that, that campaign got written about nine years ago. Mm -hmm. Eight or nine years ago. And all I've done is every year I will go through and I skim through all the emails. Just a quick... I keep them all as a spreadsheet and it links to a Google doc. So I have a quick and easy access, not having to go into my software. Mm -hmm. um, and I just skim through them and like, is this still relevant? Do I need to cut this out? Do I need to replace it? Do I need to update the typos I didn't catch before? Cause that happens sometimes. Um, and then if I need to replace one, I will. So, you know, if say, say for instance, I recommend a piece of software and that's changed or whatever, things like that sometimes happen from time to time. Um, or I'll, I'll reference something where when I wrote it, it was more time, it was evergreen, but time-based, which by the way, evergreen is something you always want to think about. You want it to work. It doesn't matter if it's today, tomorrow, next month, next year, it's still relevant. Like I told you about Bob's book. I've been talking about Bob's book for over a decade. Yeah. 
So you want to keep that in mind and want something that's relevant no matter where. But then if you get, if you go through and you put together, even if you put together a year, one year, that's 52 emails if you go once a week. Mm -hmm. And let's say you write six once a month, but you just keep going once a month, half a day. That's it. Once a month, half a day. Yeah. You'll get better as you go. And you'll find more stuff to talk about. You'll get more efficient. So instead of six, you might go to eight. Or you just write six and you know head out early because you got faster. You know, instead of instead of four hours, it takes you three hours or it takes you two hours. I got to the point where I was literally writing six emails in an hour and a half. Wow. <laughs> because I just got so efficient with it. Yeah. And I found my voice because of practicing so much, I found my voice. And so that is how you set it up. Mm. Now, I mean, obviously I've got a whole formula that I use with it. I like, there's terms, like I like to use what I call consistently inconsistent, um, things that make it feel more in person. Like you personally wrote it for somebody as opposed mm -hmm. to it still being through an autoresponder system. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is the gist of it. And if you can do that, you're now staying in touch, staying top of mind with the people that you meet consistently. And you just keep adding to it until you decide to stop. You get, like I said, you get a three-year campaign. Nobody's going to remember if you loop it back to the beginning at the end of the three years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd almost say that at a year. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I've only had one person who's ever um, remembered specifically something that I did and yeah. nobody else has ever said anything. But the yeah. cool thing about it is I have people that like the gentleman I talked about 10 years later, he comes back and refers his, his son's business to me. I had another person who, uh, another book that I that I recommended that was part of my system was The Greatest Salesman of the World by Odd Mendino, which is another great read, by the way. Uh, very short one. That's, you could probably read that in like an hour and a half. Yeah, and, I read it in like an hour and a half and I'm a mm -hmm. slow reader. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I love to read, but I'm a slow reader. That's, that's one thing for sure. Um, and so she emails me, she replies back to that that email where I recommended um, Og's book. And she's like, hey, Eli, I wanted to, to let you know that I got your email last Thursday and I bought the book on Friday. Um, I've really been struggling a lot in my business and it's been really hard. And I've actually considered just giving up and going back to getting a job. And mm -hmm. so I saw your email come in. I decided to go ahead and get the book and read it. And I read it over the weekend. And I have to say, Thank you so much. You just saved my business. This book totally resonated. It got me back on fire. I'm ready to rock and roll. Thank you wow. so much. So which that gives you the warm and fuzzies, right? Yeah. It's like, like that's awesome. You know, and here, but here's the fun thing about this is at the time that I got that email, um, I I go back in and I I was like, and I knew I knew which book she was talking about. That email had been written six years prior. Wow. So you don't know when that's going to resonate. Guaranteed, she's seen that email before. Yeah. She'd, she'd already gotten it once, but she wasn't in the same place the time, first time. Mm -hmm. And so this time she was in the right place, right time. And that book helped. Man. So that's the power of this. That's the power of, of putting this kind of stuff out there. And all you're doing is just sharing tips, tricks, and then you, you interject them with things that you've got going on. Maybe you've got an event coming up or a promo or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's not, it's not one or the other. It's both. Yeah. And the cool thing is that if you decide you need to take some time off, the machine still works. If you get sick, it still works. If, you know, if you decide you want to go on a cruise, it still works. And if you're just yeah. adding tips, tricks, and resources, adding value, that's, that's just stuff for your audience. You can even change your business and you've still already built up the credibility as a person who adds value that when you actually announce the new business, you have a built-in audience that's excited for you. Mm. It's pretty fun stuff. Yeah, man, that that is awesome and extreme follow up for sure. You're exactly right about that. And just thinking about these timelines you're talking about too, something that you did six years ago, something that you did 10 years ago has came back to help you now. 
yeah too many times especially in today's time today's generation it's all about what did i do right now that got mm -hmm. me the result and yeah. i want it right now i don't want to have to wait 30 days i don't have to wa wait <laughs> two years to get the result from the actions i took today mm. i want it now or i want it yesterday even. yeah Sometimes it's gotten that's, bad. And that's, see, that's the thing. That's, I mean, you just have brought up a really good thing. <clears throat> you know, we're, we're all in sales. It doesn't matter if we're, if we're a salesperson or working for somebody else or if it's our own business or whatever, we're in sales of some sort. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, when it really comes down to it, we want people to buy yesterday, plain and simple. Yeah. Um, that's there's, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm one of the very first people who say I'm a capitalist. I like getting paid. Okay. And mm -hmm. I, I'm never going to shy away from that. Uh, but that doesn't mean I have to be a pushy sales guy, mm -hmm. which we have, there's a stigma out there for that. And it's, and it's rightfully there because a lot of people, that's the way they are. They're thinking about today. And there's, there's an analogy that I use with this is the hunter versus the farmer. The hunter goes out every single day and they eat what they kill. Mm -hmm. That, that is, that is what's going on today. Now there's validity in that. If you, you got to eat today. Okay. Yeah. So you got to make a sale in order to, to pay the bills today. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're planting the seeds along the way, what'll happen is you're hunting today, you're planting the seeds that will reap a harvest tomorrow. Mm. And so it's not an either or. And that's where most people miss the boat. They think it's an either or kind of situation. You build a follow up system. And, you know, and they'll go through and they'll build a follow-up system and they'll add a ton of content and, and a bunch of value, but then they never ask for the sale, but that's not a good way to go either. You've got to be able to ask for the sale, but you don't have to always pitch your stuff. That's a, that's a kicker with it. I know people who literally every email, every text, it doesn't matter how I hear from them. The only time I ever hear from them, they are pitching something. I have a friend, I love her to death. I love her to death, but um, she doesn't listen to me. And I finally gave up trying to, to get her to change her ways. But every single communication that I get from her is a pitch. Every single one. Mm. I mean, I actually, more recently, there was one text she sent me that was a personal message that didn't include a pitch. And I was shocked. <laughs> when she emails me, I don't even open them. Yeah. Because she trained me that she was going to pitch me. Yeah. And who wants that email? Exactly. And now there's nothing wrong with offering your services oh, again, yeah. but you don't want to be pitched every other day, right? Yeah. If all I ever get from you is the next greatest thing that you need to buy, or even if you're as a speaker, a lot of times we're speaking and we start getting on summits and stuff. I get emails from people that literally it's always go sign up for this free event, go to sign up for this free event, go sign up for this free event. Well, guess what? We we've gotten numb to that because it's just another pitch. It might be a, for a free mm -hmm. thing, but you know, they're going to upsell on a VIP ticket and yeah. it's going to be 30 other people that are all going to be pitching their stuff. You know that. Mm -hmm. So you become numb to it. But if you suggest a book that's got no ties attached to it, or send a video, you know, one of the videos that I love sharing with people is Simon Sinek, Start With Why. If you haven't watched mm -hmm. it, it's another great one. Go look on that. If you spell his name wrong, you'll go get a Simon Sinek, Start With Why. You can listen to or watch his TED Talk. And um, that's one I'll recommend to people. And I don't get anything out of that. Mm -hmm. So by adding a bunch of that kind of stuff into the mix, when I have something that I'm actually selling or something I'm actually offering, whether it be... You know, even if it's something for free, like a free ticket to an event, people pay attention because they know that when I send stuff, it's stuff that's going to be valuable. Mm -hmm. And even if they don't read every email, you know, we nowadays we want to use email and texting and social and all the other stuff out there. Uh, you mix it up, but this applies in every technology, by the way, no matter what the platform is. When you mix it up and just keep adding value, when you do make an offer, people are paying more attention and their walls are down already because they see every time you put something out there, you're always adding value. Well, this one's selling something, but it's still, everything he does has got value to it. So it's, it's probably pretty good stuff. Let me go check it out. Yeah. That's when they click on that link and go check it out. And of course, you know, percentage of them will buy. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense?
Yeah, it makes total sense. And another way I've heard this put, it's like when you give to people, you're giving value, it's like you're depositing into mm -hmm. their bank. But when you go for that ask, yeah. you're withdrawing. Yep. So the more you withdraw, obviously, at some point, you go negative. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to continue Social to karma. put in. Exactly. You have to continue to put into this bank. So that way, when you do go for that ask, that withdrawal doesn't overdraft. Yep. Yeah, exactly. man. It's so awesome that you, you do that. I mean, it's so important for us to follow up no matter what, especially as speakers, we get on these stages and we don't have the opportunity to go meet every single person. People yeah. are interested in us. And like you mentioned, we have these different people with different personalities. Some are, they're ready to buy right now. Yes. You should have already pitched them from the beginning. You got on stage and you should have told them where to go buy. Yeah. Then you've got people that really have to think through it. They have to really build up that no like and trust factor with you. And then they can make that responsible in their minds, responsible decision, that intellectual decision. And then you got to have people that just never buy. <laughs> We're just going to throw three buckets. People that just right. will never buy. Don't yeah. focus on them. Focus on Right. All the rest of them. That quick well, sale is nice, but usually most of the time, and I forget the sales statistic, what it's like, it's average of like six to nine touches or something like that before yeah. somebody actually buys from you. Yeah. So, and, and let me touch on that because it's so funny. We don't even know where that quote really came from, where yeah. that stat came from. It's like, and, and who tells it the number? Sometimes it's six people. Sometimes it's 10 people. Sometimes Probably it's a sales guy that made it up. Probably, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but it makes sense. And so I always tell people, it's like, it doesn't matter what the specific is, but let's say it takes, you know, six to 12 touches and touches in today's world have expanded so much. It used to be when that was created, it was a touch was walking in the door or picking up the phone. That was all we mm -hmm. had at back then. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm a lot, a lot older than people realize I am. Uh, and nowadays a touch could be picking up the phone. It could be walking in the door. It could be sending them a text, could be sending them an email, could be sending them a message on, on Facebook, or it could be them seeing a post you did on any social site. Maybe mm -hmm. they saw a post you did on LinkedIn, but then you messaged them on Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Any one of those is a touch. Maybe they saw you on a podcast. That's a touch. And so we want to keep putting that stuff out there. That's the front end stuff. The email is one of the back end stuff. The text is a back end thing piece. But here's the thing with it is if it takes six to 12 touches for somebody to truly make a buying decision, and that's it, you know, that's that's loose. Some people it only takes one, some people might take 20. You never mm -hmm. know. Yeah. But most sales professionals, people who use salesmen or saleswoman in their name, give up after three tries. Mm. They, they, they call, you know, first contact, second contact is a follow-up call or a follow-up email, third mm -hmm. contact, maybe another 30 days later. And after that, it's like, pretty much you're dead to me. <laughs> okay? yeah. Here's the thing. If you're giving up after three tries and it takes six tries for somebody to make a buying decision, you are giving up just as they're getting warmed up. Hmm. If you've ever been in that situation where you talk to somebody six months down the road and you find out that they bought from your competitor, that's probably what happened. Yep. Because you warmed them up. You brought the walls down mm. and then you gave up. Mm. And the next person came along and it was a lay down kill. <laughs> I mean, right. I hate to use the, the analogy, but it's true because yeah. you already got them comfortable with the idea that they had a problem and there is a solution. But when they were ready to make that decision, you weren't there. Somebody else was. Mm. That's why you want to be there. That's why you need to stay in front of them because when they are ready, they will reach out to you. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's a, you send an email out and they reply going, Hey, thank you so much. I've been meaning to call you. I've just been busy. And that opens up that dialogue. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Man, so so much good information, Eli. If people want to reach out to you to get just to follow you to be able to yeah. get in your your three year email follow up. No, but yeah, if they want to connect with you, I see if you're on video, you can see this. But for those that are not on video, where's the best place for them to connect with you? Easiest way to connect with me is connectwitheli.com. And Eli is E L Y. 
So connect with Eli with a Y.com. And from there, you can, I mean, you can connect with me. First off, all my social media sites are there. Uh, you can even save my contact information, all that kind of fun stuff. But if you listen to this and this resonate with you and you want to chat, there's even a spot um, at the bottom, scroll down and there's going to be a button that says, let's chat. It's a link to my calendar. By the way, I'm going to put this out there and I'm very, very strict about this. It is not a sales conversation. This is, the, this is not for me to get you on a call to pitch you. If we have a cool conversation and it leads that way and you want to ask more and I'm happy to answer those questions, I'd love to be able to help you out. But I love having these calls. I love meeting cool people. That's, the, that's kind of my mantra. And so I'm open to a conversation of just getting to know you and then seeing how can I help you. Sometimes that will be with our programs, but a lot of times I'm pointing people in the directions of people that I know. And so I'm totally happy to do that. So connect with Eli.com is the best way to connect with me. And I got some free stuff on there too. You can check out, but that's really, you know, book a call with me, chat with me. I'm, I'm, I'm open to that. I love having cool conversations. Awesome. Well, Eli, man, I appreciate you coming on and sharing this, the, the back end, the after being on stage, what you should do to really help create more of that impact and really get sales for yourself as well in your company. I appreciate you coming on and sharing that information. Well, thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate you having me. It's my pleasure. Um, I'm pretty sure you could tell I'm pretty, pretty lively about this stuff. I have a lot of fun with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs>